Hi, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can set up side to side VPN using two Microtech devices. Before we get started, I have the step by step guide on my website. So if you are interested, you can follow the step by step guide here, which I'll put the link in the description below. Also, one thing to note, you could configure the Microtech either using HTTP web config, Winbox or CLI over SSH. However, we are using Winbox here. So it is best to have either HTTP or Winbox to follow this tutorial. I'll create a separate video for the CLI users and will link in the description below. As you can see, I have the setup where I have a Microtech site, which I call it HQ. For the sake of this video, I will call it branch one. Uh, that has a subnet of 10.1.1.0 slash 24. And another site, uh, branch two, uh, that has a network of 10.2.2.0 slash 24. So before we proceed, let's see if we can initiate communication from the branch one to the branch two site. Let me open up one of the Windows server in the branch one. Let me see the IP configuration by typing IP config. As you could see, I have an IP from the 10.1.1.0 slash 24 subnet. And when I try to ping google.com, I'm getting a response, which means I have an internet. However, that's not the case with the remote subnet. If I try to ping 10.2.2. any of the range, it's timing out. All right, so let me do the same test on the branch two side where we have a Linux host. The Linux host, the Ubuntu that I have, has a network from 10.2.2.0 slash 24 subnet. And same way, if I try to ping google.com, you can see that I'm able to ping, which means I have internet access. However, I'm unable to ping the branch one, which is the headquarters, right? Which means the internet is working on both the sides, but there is no connectivity between uh, these two sides. Uh, at the end of this video, we'll have a connectivity between these two sides using the IPsec side to side VPN. So let me open up a Winbox. I hope you already downloaded and installed those to manage your network. If you don't, um, I would recommend open the HTTP to access a Microtech to follow this tutorial. All right. In my Winbox, you can already see there are two Microtech router already pre added. If you could see on the end, 8191 is a branch one and 8292 port is a branch two. Okay, so it's easy for me to manage it that way. So it's up to you how you want to add it and save host names. Let me log into the branch one. As you can see, the branch has a IP address. If I go to IP and the address, you could see that it has a 10.1.1.0 slash 24 series. Uh, let's also check from the branch two here as well. You could see the IP address is uh, 10.2.2.0 slash 24 subnet. I'm closing the branch two and uh, heading over to branch one to make the configuration changes first. Once the branch one is configured, we can then move on to the branch two. All right. Uh, the IPC configuration consists of two phases, phase one and the phase two. Okay, let's configure the phase one on the branch one side and then we will proceed with the phase two. The phase one of the configuration goes in this order profile, peer, identities. And the phase two consists of proposal and policies. That's it. Okay, and you also have to configure fiber policy, which I'll cover later on. Let's go ahead and configure the IPsec tunnel. To configure the IPsec tunnel, go to IP, IPsec. In the IPsec window, click on profile tab. We'll start with the profile. So click on the profile tab. You will see a default profile already predefined, but I would recommend you start off with creating a new one. Click on the plus icon to add new profile. In the new profile window, add a user-friendly name. In my case, I will name it as branch one profile maybe. Uh, the other settings we need to worry about here are hash algorithms, encryption algorithm, and the DH group. Uh, in the hash algorithm, let me choose SHA-256. You may feel free to choose what, whichever you like, but SHA-256 is generally a uh, more secure one, okay? At this time of this recording, of course. And for encryption, we will choose uh, AES-256. DH group, I will choose uh, mod 1536. That will be equivalent to group 5 if you are coming from other firewall vendors like Fortigate or Palo Altos. 
Uncheck the NAT traversal option here as we are connected directly to the public IP. In case your Microtech device is located behind a NAT device, then you might want to check this option. But in my case, it's different. So it's directly connected to the public site. So it should be okay to uncheck this and click on OK. We have now created the profile. Let's move on to the peer configuration now. Click on peer tab now. In that, click on the plus icon to create a new peer configuration. In the name, add a name. I'm naming it like branch 01 peer 1. In the address, you need to enter the public address of the remote branch. In our setup, it is 2.2.2.2. .2 in the profile drop down, I choose the profile that we just created in our previous step. Uh, in the exchange mode, it is best to choose IKE version, which is 2. Uh, choose that. If you don't choose that, it, by default, it will choose uh, IKE version 1 which is the older one, we don't want to do that. Though it will work perfectly fine, but it is best to choose the latest version. And uh, down below you have an option passive, right? So you can choose that if you are not the one who initiate the connection. However, in my setup, the connection will be initiated from either side. So I choose a uh, send initial contact option, all right? And then click on okay. Now you set the peer, it's time for us to have an authentication for the phase one, right? So you could either use a pre-shared key or a certificate. So we're going to choose a very common method, which is the pre-shared key. So let's now add the pre-shared key authentication for the phase one. Click on identities tab and press plus icon to create new identity. In the new window, choose the peer that we already defined from the drop down. And on the authentication methods, choose uh, pre-shared key. And in the secret, enter the enter a strong pre-shared key and then click on OK. There are so many PSK generators out there, so you might as well choose that. And this is a small pre-shared key that I'm using because it's a lab. So in a production environment, it is best to have more characters on your pre-shared key. Because the whole point of uh, setting up this VPN is to secure uh, the environment. I, so we don't want to use something which is easy to crack. So we just completed the phase one of the configuration. Great. Let's now configure the phase two. The phase two starts with proposal. Click on the proposal tab uh, and click on the plus icon to add new one. In the proposal window, add the name branch zero one proposal. Similar to the phase one algorithm, we have algorithms in phase two as well. Uh, so choose SHA-256. Again, you can choose whichever you want, but I'm just uh, choosing the more secured one here. Um, so SHA-256 as um, authentication algorithm and AES-256 CBC as encryption algorithm. In the PFS group uh, 5, which is mode P1536, and then click on OK. Let's now configure the policies for the tunnel. Um, so click on policies tab and press the plus icon. In the general tab, choose the peer that we defined and then check the option tunnel. Enter the private IP address of this LAN network as source address, uh, which is 10.1.1.0 slash 24. If you have other subnet that you have, you want to advertise, you could use that as well. And for the destination, enter the destination LAN network subnet, which is 10.2.2.0 slash 24. And now click on action tab. And in the proposal drop down, choose proposal that we defined earlier and click on OK. We have now completed IPsec configuration on the first branch, but there is one more thing. We need to configure a firewall policy on Microtech router to exclude from the default NAT and send it via IPsec. Okay, bit different than other enterprise firewalls out there or routers, but this is how we can do it. So go to IP, firewall, click on the NAT tab. As you can see, I have only single NAT rule at the moment, which will help you to NAT my internal private IPs to be able to go out to the internet, right? So that's the only NAT rule that I have. Click on the plus icon to add new one. In the general, choose the source NAT, but that is by default. In the source address, enter the subnet, which is 10.1.1.0 slash 24. In the destination, remote branch destination subnet. That will be 10.2.2.0 slash 24. Click on the action tab. Click on action and under action drop down, choose accept. Check the log box if you want to see the logs and then click on OK. Now you will see the newly created rules all the way down, which will not have any effect. So we need to move it on to the top 
for it to work. Move the road to the top just like so. That's all you have to do in the branch one side. Let's now move on to the branch two side. For that, get back into the bin box and select the branch two microtech device which has a port number ends with A292. Double click on that. Um, like before, let's configure the IPsec by going to IP IPsec. So in this step, you need to make sure whatever you define on the branch one should actually match on the branch two. So in the IPsec window, click on profiles like we did before and click on the plus icon and the name of your choice. Uh, for example, branch two profile or uh, choose the hash algorithm, which is uh, SHA 256 like we added on the branch one encryption algorithm AS 256. Same as before DH group mode P1536. Uncheck the NAT traversal and then click on OK. Go to the peer, click on the plus icon to add the new peer. Enter the name branch 02 peer. In the address, enter the branch 1 microtech router public IP, which is 1.1.1.1. Choose the branch 2 profile that we defined in our previous step. Exchange mode, choose IKV2. Leave everything else default and then click on OK. Now go to identities and then click on plus icon to add new identity. In the identity window, choose the peer that we just defined. Authentication method, leave it as pre-shared key. Enter the pre-shared key as a secret here. Ensure that you type the pre-shared key exactly what you type in the previous branch one configuration. So just copy and paste it on the branch two. And then click on OK. Now let's configure the proposal. Click on proposal tab and then click on the plus icon. Enter the name of the proposal. Uh, branch 02 proposal in the authentication algorithm choose SHA-256 encryption algorithm choose AS-256 choose mode P1536 as DH group and then click on OK and finally in IPsec click on policy and then click on plus icon to add new policy in the policy window choose peer that we just defined branch 02 peer Check the tunnel option, source address, enter the source address as 10.2.2.0 slash 24, which is my local subnet at the branch 2. Destination address, enter the destination address as 10.1.1.0 slash 24, which is the remote side LAN. Click on action tab on the same window. And under the proposal drop down, choose the proposal that we defined and click on OK. As soon as I say click on OK, you could see there was one message sent. And immediately after that, it goes into established state. But this is not the phase one. This is actually phase two. In IPsec, phase one will be established first and then the phase two. If the phase one is down, the phase two will never get established, which means at this point, everything is up and running, both the phase two and phase one. But how do I see the status of phase one? While on the same IPsec configuration window, click on the active peer tab and you can see the phase one is in established state and if you don't see anything at all which means it's not established at all can we now test the communication between the sites not yet this is where many people get confused the tunnel is up and when you try to initiate the traffic it will not pass that's because we have not configured the firewall NAT policy on the branch 2 device so let's configure the NAT policy click on IP firewall in the firewall window click on NAT and press the plus icon to add the new NAT policy and this NAT policy will be right opposite to the branch 1 policy the subnet will be interchanged in the chain choose source NAT uh, source address would be 10.2.2.0 slash 24 destination address would be 10.1.1.0 slash 24 action accept and check the log option and click on OK like we did in the branch one configuration, move the policy to the top, like so. That should be it. And we have now completed the configuration of IPsec site to site VPN on Microtech router. Let's now go ahead and test the network. So if you have done everything perfectly fine at this point, we should be able to initiate the communication on both sides. Let's go over to the branch one Windows server. As you could see, we are unable to ping the branch two IP before. Let's try to ping again ping 10.2.2.60 which is our Linux host on the branch 2 and you can see we are now able to ping the remote side. Let's try to SSH into the Linux server. SSH safe at 10.2.2.60 hit enter enter the password 
and uh, you can see I was able to log in successfully. Just for fun, let's try to ping Windows Server IP 10.1.1.50 while you are on the SSH, and you can see it worked fine as well. I've already have a direct access to Ubuntu Linux running on branch two, the same PC we try to SSH into. So let me log into that directly. Now use app arrow as I already have the ping command with the right IP. So we just hit enter and now you can see everything is working fine. You can do the trace route with the command mtr 10.1.1.1 which is a branch one microtech IP address. You can see it's just one hop away and we have successfully set up IPsec side to side VPN between two sites and we also tested the communication between the two sites using the Windows and Linux machine and everything is working just fine. So one thing to note, sometimes you may get stuck and most of the time when things doesn't work is because either Microtech site is behind an ad device or you haven't configured either the phase one or phase two properly. And that's it in this video and thanks for watching and if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.